I don't have to say it, you've heard it a hundred times, Super Mario Bros. is really optimized. The theoretical limit for speedrunning this game has gone down one single frame in the last 16 years. But even though the known limit has stayed firmly in place, there have been many attempts to break it, and you probably wouldn't believe just how close they are to working. There have even been some unsolved mysteries over the years that we still can't explain. Today, let's take a deep dive into all of it. I'll explain all of the ways 453 is almost possible, and I might even touch on how it maybe, secretly, is. Alright, let's get into it. Here are some details to make sure we're on the same page. The theoretical best time to beat this game is 454.03. This time requires pushing left and right at the same time, which isn't possible on a regular controller. With no left plus right, the best possible time is 454.26. I'll refer to both of these times throughout the video, but the main focus will be on the task with left plus right, since it's the true limit and we need to save just two frames to push it to 453 territory. Huge shout out to Gaster, who helped answer questions and whose tasks of this game I will be referencing. He made the ultimate task of this game that's optimal in every way. Because this game has frame rules, you don't always have to play completely optimally to beat each stage as fast as possible. And even to save individual frames, you sometimes don't have to have absolutely perfect movement. Tests of this game will often choose strategies which aren't perfectly optimal, but are more entertaining and still save the necessary frame rules. Happy Lee made the original 454.03 back in late 2010, and he took liberties to do the coolest looking tricks while still getting the perfect time. In 2021, Gaster made a task with the purpose of using all the best known strategies to be sub-pixel perfect. Basically, this run is as close to 453 as we can currently get. Okay, let's break this down level by level. Starting in 1-1, the task is one frame away from the frame rule. That is a lot of ones I just said, but I'm gonna say it one more time. The task is one frame from saving a frame rule in 1-1. This is a really unfortunate and infamous circumstance in this game. If you could save one frame in any of the three parts of this stage, then a 453.68 would be possible. But as you can imagine, this has been looked into heavily. Tassers like Mr. Wint have built exhaustive search tools to analyze areas and find the best inputs for optimal movement. And even then, no way has been found to do the underground section or the flagpole glitch or any of the stage faster. On the plus side, this gives a bunch of frames to play within RTA runs, which is nice, and opportunity for entertainment in TAS runs. In Happy Lee's Warpless TAS, he does this fun wall jump and wastes 22 frames in the level. Wait, 22? How can he get away with that? Isn't the frame rule every 21 frames? Because Mario reaches the end of the stage later, he has a lower amount of time remaining on the level timer. After Mario walks to the castle, the game awards you 50 points for every tick of the timer that you had left. It takes one frame for every tick to be awarded. Because Happy Lee finished with 368 on the clock instead of the usual 370, this countdown is 2 frames shorter and he only ends up 20 frames slower instead of 22. Isn't that crazy? Even taking the exact time on the clock into account, this level is exactly 1 frame from saving a frame rule. That begs the question, how close is the timer to taking down when you play this level at full speed? Well, you're not gonna believe this. The timer is 1 frame from ticking down. Not even a frame. If you grab the flagpole the same frame the timer would tick down, then it doesn't update the timer on that frame and you're stuck with the higher time remaining. Here's an explanation from Simplistic you can pause to read if you'd like. But yeah, is this some kind of sick joke? This level is one frame from a frame rule and we finish this stage on the exact frame the timer should tick down and save us a frame, but it doesn't tick down? That is so ridiculous. I didn't even realize the timer tick was this close before working on this video. As frustrating as all of that is, there are still a lot of other ways 453 is almost possible, and this may not even be the closest one. Real quick, this video is sponsored by HelloFresh. I don't know about you, but I think good food is pretty good, and HelloFresh is a great way to have some good food in your life. With their meal service, you never have to have that moment where you stare aimlessly into your pantry and wonder what to eat. The pre-portioned meals make things super easy and simple, and cut down on waste at the same time. I've had an easy time following all the instructions for each meal, and it's been a great way for me to get into cooking more. I also appreciate the wide variety of options they let you choose from each week. I'm a real sucker for anything with curry powder in it, and this week I made these curry bowls. If you're looking to have lots of good meals on hand, or for an easy way to cook more often, this is a great way to do it. Each new person who tries HelloFresh will directly support me, so if you'd like to try it out, use my link or go to hellofresh.com and use code PODCOSMICMAY16 to get 16 free meals plus free shipping. 
Once you click, the description will live update to count up the purchases. Moving on from 1-1, 1-2 doesn't really have anything to talk about. This stage is 13 frames away from the next frame rule, and there aren't any working theories to do it faster. So that brings us to 4-1. There also isn't a ton to talk about on this stage, other than that the biggest unsolved mystery in this game's history happened here. If you're familiar with the infamous TTC upwarp in Mario 64, what I'm about to show you is basically this game's equivalent. Back in 2018, the runner Mav shared this video. This may not look like much, but we're lucky we got this footage at all. He was just doing some flagpole glitch practice and not recording at the time. Then, out of nowhere, something really weird happened. Mav got what seemed to be a full flagpole glitch. For those who don't know, there's the regular flagpole glitch, where touching the flag from inside the block at the bottom makes the flag not come down. That lets Mario get to the castle faster. But if you're able to grab the flag low enough that Mario doesn't get on top of the block at all, then he'll end up on the left side of the flag and trigger the timer countdown immediately. Under your average conditions, there's no way to grab the flag this low, but there are a few different situations that make it possible. You can do it by bouncing off of an enemy, you can do it if it's an underwater stage, and you can do it by clipping into the ground and then jumping out of the ground and into the flagpole. But none of these are what happened in Mav's case. In fact, the way he describes it, it wasn't even like your typical full flagpole glitch. He says he did a regular flagpole glitch, Mario did his normal flagpole grab and sat on the block, and then for some reason he started sliding to the left and fell off. That is really bizarre sounding. For a long time, we thought maybe he could have stumbled on a set of inputs that just barely made it work, or maybe a cosmic ray flipped a bit and altered Mario's position just slightly. After all, full flagpole glitch is very close to being regularly possible. You can modify Mario's physics to have a tiny bit more upwards velocity during jumps, and suddenly the trick is easily doable. But it doesn't sound like this is what happened to Mav. It's something totally different and totally unexplainable. We're lucky he paused and was able to record some of it, but it's too bad we don't have the full thing recorded. If this trick turned out to be real, no joke, it could save almost 10 seconds throughout the run. We'd be talking about 4.43 instead. The sad truth is that it was probably a hardware bug. Even standard original hardware can occasionally have unexplainable bugs. What the heck, Bowser? Mav was also playing on a flash cartridge at the time, and that introduces another chance for weird stuff to happen. Every now and then, we've been blessed by some insanely bizarre things happening when runners are playing on flash cartridges. Anyway, for now, the mystery of this 4-1 flagpole glitch remains unsolved. Next up is the most infamous level in the run, 4-2. And it will live up to its reputation in this video. There are so many ways this level barely stops us from going faster. First of all, this level, like 1-1, is only one frame from being improved by a frame rule. Again, another stage that's just one frame away, and this one has a lot of different areas to take a look at. For the main trick in this stage, we need to get Mario 20 pixels farther to the right than normal, so we can enter this pipe without scrolling the screen as much and get sent to the warp zone. There are many ways to do this, but naturally, the ultimate task is the fastest one. A clip into the top row of blocks like this is good, because you can face left and jump out of the wall as soon as you've slid far enough, and Mario accelerates very quickly when jumping backwards. The issue here is that you only have this one block wide gap to clip into the wall. Because this other block is so close, you have to slow down a little bit to let Mario get high enough for the clip. You can't jump earlier, because then Mario would hit his head on the block. If this block wasn't here, if they just put the mushroom one block to the left and had a two block wide gap here, then we'd be in business and 453 would be a thing. There is one other spot in the stage you can do a clip like this, with no block in the way, but now there's a piranha plant in the way. So many piranha plants despawn in this game, and yet we have to deal with this one. I shouldn't complain though, because we're honestly really lucky we can despawn the one in the wrong warp pipe, and the one in the 8-4 wall jump pipe. But yeah, if this piranha plant wasn't here, 453 would be possible. If you could be Fire Mario without spending the time to get a fire flower, that would also make this time save possible. If you can believe it, even just being Big Mario here would allow us to save the frame rule. Here's how. You can do a similar clip to the one we were just talking about, but on this coin block right here. Because there's no ground below it, it can keep pushing Mario all the way until he falls out of it. But we can't get it to push Mario far enough as Small Mario. As Big Mario, his head can stay in there longer and get pushed far enough to the right to make the wrong warp work. That makes not one, but two places where having a different power-up state would allow for a frame rule save in 4-2. How close is this strategy to working as Small Mario though? As I mentioned before, we need to get pushed 20 pixels. As Small Mario, it's possible to get pushed 
19 pixels. More than 19 even. If you go down to the subpixel level, you can get 4 subpixels away from a full 20 pixel push. To put that in perspective, Mario's running speed is 40 subpixels per frame. If you could get this block to push you 1 tenth the distance Mario moves in one frame, then this strategy would work. If we want to extrapolate some really stupid numbers for dramatic effect, we can say that this frame rule is 1 tenth of a frame from being saved. Or in other words, 453 is 1 six hundredth of a second away from being possible. How's that for being close? As much as there was to talk about in 4.2, there's still more in World 8. 8.1 not so much though. This stage is 17 frames from another frame rule. 8.2 is also 17 frames from another frame rule, but there was one idea that had a lot of potential. We already do a full flagpole glitch in this stage with a bullet bill, but you have to spend like 2 seconds waiting for it to reach the flagpole. Clipping in the ground is another way to do a full flagpole glitch, and there is this paracoupa to work with. It's a complex series of events, but happily did manage to pull this off. One issue with it is that you have to get Mario closer to the right side of the screen in order to reach the Koopa fast enough. So that takes extra time, and in general it's just not very fast. This came out 3 frame rules slower than using the bullet bill. Maybe it could be faster if you could get the Koopa to fall down the hole on the right side of the stairs or something, but right now that's the best we've got. Next we'll take a look at 8-3, and boy this one is actually very interesting. You'll notice the ultimate task does this wall jump at the end, which definitely wastes time. That's because finishing the stage with a time ending in a 3 will result in 3 fireworks going off, and that's slow. If you watch Happy Lee's task, he gets 244, but notice that he doesn't do the flagpole glitch. It takes several extra frames to clip into the block and jump to grab the flag, versus just grabbing the flag normally. The task can just barely get 244 on the clock with one frame to spare, so there's no way to get 244 and also do flagpole glitch. Getting the first frame of 242 with a flagpole glitch is a handful of frames faster than 244 with no flagpole glitch, but they both end up getting the same frame rule. If the fireworks mechanic didn't exist, or if it worked some other way that wasn't based on the in-game timer, or if you could go fast enough to get 244 with a flagpole glitch, then this stage would be a frame rule faster and 453 would be possible. That's not all though, there's something unique you may spot about the castle in 8.3. Have you noticed? This castle is farther away from the flagpole than all of the others in the run. And no, that's not just because it's a big castle. All of the other Dash 3 levels have their castles closer to the flagpole. This is the only castle in the game that's like this. Well, except 6-1, but I really wanted to say that still. Either way, it's still ridiculous that this is a determining factor in whether 453 is possible. The castle being 2 blocks farther away means Mario takes pretty much exactly 21 frames longer to reach it. If they put it the same distance as all of the other ones, 453 would be a thing. Why is it like that anyway? Well, the background elements like trees, bushes, and clouds all repeat in a set pattern depending on the stage. The developers had to design around this when creating the levels. I believe in 8.3, this cloud is the culprit. If you move the castle 1 or 2 blocks closer, this cloud gets messed up. And in 6-1, moving the castle makes this green hill look a little weird. This is just an assumption I made, but I think it's a reasonable conclusion. You know, they really could have just moved this castle one block closer than all of the others instead, and made things easy on us. Alright, moving on now to 8-4, frame rules are off the table, and we start talking about individual frames. Three of the five rooms aren't close to new time saves, but two of them are. The wall jump room is extremely close, as close as you can be in fact. Mario is one single subpixel away from getting in this pipe a frame earlier. Maybe it's for the best though, since if we saved this frame, the final time would be 454.01, one frame from 453, and that would really drive us crazy. We'll take a look at the cheap cheap room now, and this is one that really could have pushed the time to 453. This spot is realistically the closest the game has been to a new time save since 2010. Funnily enough, the time save in 2010 was also in this spot when Happy Lee figured out a faster way to accelerate back towards this pipe. Eleven years later, DeSmilecat had an idea to accelerate even faster. In speedruns and especially tasses, you'll often see Mario doing these backwards jumps we call fast excels. There's a lot of nuance involved in the best way to accelerate in various situations, but this room presents a special opportunity. Mario can stomp on one of the jumping cheap cheeps in this room and get a really tiny bounce from it. This bounce is much smaller than even his smallest possible jump, and under perfect conditions would let Mario accelerate 4 frames faster. It's real. This saves 4 frames. 
This time save is real. Unfortunately, the perfect conditions are not. Extensive research was done, and there was no possible way to make a cheap cheap spawn at the perfect time. So close, yet so far. If you could do this, but without the time spent standing there waiting for a cheap cheap, then the new perfect time for this game would be 453.96. Sadly, it wasn't meant to be, and that's the end of the line as far as our level breakdowns go. I do have a few more fun tidbits for you though. One interesting fact is that every time you go through a screen transition, the game will incur one frame of lag. Taking all of the pipe transitions into account, including all of those in 8.4, and even the little cutscenes before the underground stages, this means a standard any% percent speedrun has 16 frames of lag in it. Here's the funny part. If there was no lag on the transitions, meaning you'd save those 16 frames of lag, then that would put the human limit in this game, the one without the use of left plus right, incredibly at 453.999. Imagine if that was the timeline we lived in. All right, here's one more cheeky attempt runners made to try and make 453 possible. You can push pause on the very first frame after starting the game, before 400 appears on the timer in the top right corner. The idea was to use a pause to manipulate the frame rule timer in 1-1, so you would have to wait less time at the end of the stage for the frame rule. And technically, Timing doesn't start in real-time runs until 400 appears on the timer. But it didn't end up working, and even if it did, well, it would have been funny, but I don't think it would have been considered an actual improvement to the game. Just a silly technicality in the rule set. Alright, that is all the ways I'm aware of that 453 is almost possible. Some of them are so incredibly close, it's crazy to think how any one thing could have been different in this game, and it would have been possible. But at the end of the day, we really can't complain about these things barely not working, because there are other things which barely do work. We're really lucky that things like 4-2 wrong warp work at all, or that flagpole glitch exists. And secretly, 453 is possible. But that's a topic for another day. Subscribe if you want to find out how. Thanks for watching!